Dear children, greetings of the day. I am your science teacher Adil Rishi and today we shall be discussing about the electric current and its various effects. In this chapter, we are going to learn about the electricity and the electric circuits. We will also be learning about the various components used in an electric circuit. We shall come to know about an LED and we will also be knowing how to connect an LED within an electric circuit. We shall also learn about the connection of cells in series and in parallels. In this chapter, we are going to learn about the heating and the magnetic effect of electric current. So children, let us start our chapter with introduction of the electricity. What is electricity? Electricity is a form of energy that can be converted into various other forms to obtain useful work. This electricity runs in a closed and a complete loop throughout its source and the various appliances. This closed and a complete path of electricity is known as an electric circuit. The electric circuit is made using a very good conducting material like that of a copper or an aluminium wire. In order to make our circuits more convenient and easy for us, we use an electric switch. A switch which is a device that is used for connecting or breaking the circuit at our own convenience and our ease. When the switch is placed on, the circuit gets complete and the electricity runs throughout the circuit and the bulbs will glow. And when the switch is placed on the off position, the circuit is broken up and the electric current will not flow in the circuit. Now, children. Let's learn about the LEDs. LEDs means the light emitting diodes. We are all seen that we are no longer using the old ordinary bulbs. But instead of those bulbs, we are using LEDs. These LEDs are very different from the ordinary bulbs as they do not use any filament for glowing up. These LEDs are more efficient than the ordinary bulbs because they use very less amount of electricity, they do not heat up and the most important of all is that they last for a very longer period of time. These LEDs usually come up with a specified positive and the negative terminal. The longer wire of the LED represents the positive terminal while as the shorter wire of the LED will represent the negative terminal of an LED and both the negative and positive terminals of the LED are connected with the respective positive and the negative terminal of the cell. These LEDs are very intolerant towards the change in the amount of electric current. So when we are using an LED in an electric circuit, we need to use an external resistor in order to regulate the flow of electric current in the circuit. Now, children, we often come across in making up the diagrams for showing the electric circuits in our notebooks. But it becomes very difficult for us to make the diagram and make the diagram of various components of electric circuits. In order to overcome this problem and to make our work easy, we use various standard symbols for representing the different components of electric circuit. For example, this is the symbol that is used for an electric bulb. This is the symbol that represents a cell. This is the symbol used for representing an LED. And this is a symbol for representing a fuse. Likewise, there are various other symbols that are used for representing the various components of electric circuit in the circuit diagrams. Children, you might have seen that various electrical appliances like the remotes of our TV, the toys and the various other things, they work on the electric cells. Electric cells come up with the two terminals that is the negative terminal and the positive terminal which are very well marked on the cell. Sometimes we need to connect more than one cell in order to make our appliance run. A group of the cells is known as a battery. Always in a battery the cells are to be connected in a proper way to get a continuous and a regular flow of electric current. 
children as that now we are aware of the cells and an led now let us try to construct an electric circuit using an led and a cell what are the materials that we are going to require for the construction of the same we are going to require a couple of cells an led two connecting wires of about 15 centimeters in length we are going to require an adhesive tape and two crocodile clips the steps that we need to follow in order to construct the circuit are as follows in our first step we are going to remove the insulation from one of the copper wires on its both of the ends and connect one end of the copper wire to the negative terminal of the cell and the other end of the same wire is connected to the negative terminal of the LED. So far as the second step is concerned, in this step what we are going to do here is that we are going to remove again the insulation from both ends of the uh, connecting wire and connect a resistor to the second wire in the middle of it and the both free ends of this wire are then connected to the positive terminal of the cell as well as to the positive terminal of the LED. Now when the connections are secure and the arrangement is fully done you will see that the current will flow from the cell through the connecting wires and the LED will start glowing. So this will be our simple circuit in which we have used a cells and an LED. As you have seen in this circuit that we have used two cells that is we have used a battery to operate this circuit. But as I told you earlier also that whenever we are using more than one cell in an electric circuit, the cells need to be arranged in a proper way. So there are two basic ways of arranging the cells in a circuit. And those two ways are connecting the cells in series and connecting them in parallels. So let us discuss them one by one. The first method of connecting cells is to connect them in series. When we are connecting the cells in series, we are connecting them end to end. That is, the positive terminal of the first cell is connected to the negative terminal of the other cell. And so on and so forth, the other cells are connected in the circuit. So this arrangement of connecting the cells is known as connecting the cells in series. The other method of connecting the cells is to connect them in parallels. When we are connecting the cells in parallels, what we actually are trying to do is that we are connecting the positive terminals of all cells at a single point and the negative terminals of all the cells at a single point. So this way we connect the cells in parallels which becomes more efficient and good. So students that will be all for this session. We will be continuing the chapter that is we will be continuing the effects of the electric current in our next session. Till then have a good day. Thank you.